The next aspects of information-based solutions is data representation. Once we have the data, we can then make use of it. We can represent that data in various ways. We talked about a few of those, like using sun symbols and cloud symbols and rain symbols to represent different states of weather. But there are a whole range of different ways that we can um, represent data. Now, emojis are a good example, where we have these various symbols that represent various feelings. So instead of having to write out and explain what these feelings are, we can use a little emoji that represents that information. Um, so there's lots of different ways that we can take data and we can interpret it in different ways, or we can represent it in ways that make additional meaning to that data. Um, so with the young, younger children, they're going to be learning um, what different letters mean and associating those often with various images, such as E for elephant or F for frog. Um, so they're helping to learn about the meaning of various letters, which are data, through association with something else. Um, so the letter E is being associated with an image of an elephant. Now, that is a big part of data representation. Now, there are a few formal ways of doing this, such as Braille, where we have a series of, of um, raised dots that can be interpreted to mean various letters and words. We have binary, which is using zeros and ones to represent various letters and numbers. We've got Morse code, where we have dots and dashes, often transmitted as sounds, which can represent various letters and numbers. So there's many different ways of encoding information and transmitting it as data. Um, semaphore flags are another way, of using different flags to represent various letters, numbers and meanings. Um, smoke signals, another one. So your students as a project could come up with a new way of transmitting information through data. Um, it may be putting their hands on their heads in different ways to transmit various messages. Um, teachers often use this, putting your hands on your heads when you want your students to be quiet. That's the use of data to transmit a meaning to your students. And you could come up with a whole new different sign language using various um, bodily gestures and so forth. And that can be made into various games and other activities. So think about how students can represent data and communicate the meaning of that data in various ways. Now, another big aspect of this is identifying patterns and for students being able to see patterns in the data. Now, we often do this with younger students with shapes and colors, um, being able to identify all of the, the round shapes and the square shapes and the triangular shapes or the, the red round shapes and the green round shapes and the blue triangular shapes and forming collections of data based upon these properties of the data. Now, as students may get to um, older years, we might look at other things like that, like looking at, say, um, sound clips. A sound clip is just another bit of data. And we could look at the properties of that. What, what's the beat of the sound clip? What's the, t uh, the tonal nature, uh, the length of the sound clip, the volume of the sound clip? There can be a whole range of different things that we can categorize and understand the data of a collection of sound clips by the same process that we used when we looked at the different patterns in colored shapes. So this is what we explore in the early years around data. And then we start looking at the meaning that these um, elements have. So the example I give is around the stop signs. There's a whole range of different symbols that have different properties that indicate to us that we should stop when we see this sign. But they're not always uniformly consistent um, around the world. There's different variations. We try to make them consistent um, within a single country so that we all um, can recognize them more quickly. But they have various properties that give impart certain meaning. Now, often it's the shape. Generally, it's circular or octagonal. Um, often it has a hand on it, which we generally recognize as being a symbol for stop. 
in Western countries, but in other countries, it's not necessarily that has that meaning. Um, sometimes we use color. Um, red generally means danger. So that's an indication. But again, not uniformly in every country. Um, and often we also use the words like stop. But that's also only in English. In other languages, it would be different again. So while we can communicate information through this um, process, we do have to be careful about misinterpretation. And that's a big part of data in that it can be misinterpreted in various ways. So different aspects of data are an important element. And we often use dice and hand signals and uh, just tally marks. And of course, words to mean various things. So again, the example I give is Different numbers can be represented in various ways. Um, from one to six, it can be different um, facings of a dice with a number of um, little dots on the dice. We can make a table up and color in various boxes in the table to represent how many there are. We can use dashes to tally up the number of um, elements there are. We can use numbers, um, Roman numerical numbers. We could also use words to represent various numbers. So there's lots of different ways we can represent various things. And that's what we're learning about in terms of data representation. Now, it's important, though, to recognize the cultural differences. Um, one aspect is to look at um, indigenous cultures and how they represented various elements through a different cultural perspective. OK. Then we get into the digital elements in years five and six in particular, how we take these representations and we digitize them. We've talked a bit about binary. Now we need to make sure that students can explore how to actually create a sequence of binary, generally from decimal into binary and from binary into decimal. But there are other um, coding forms. Uh, binary, which is base two, and decimal, which is base 10, are just two of many different ways of encoding data. We have base 16, which is called hexadecimal. Um, there's base eight, which is called oct um, octanal, I think it is. Um, so there are other number systems other than the ones that we have decided upon in Western um, numbering, which is the decimal system. Um, throughout history, we've had various different um, forms of numbering systems. But binary is the number system used by computers. And so that's an important one that students need to learn. How to write out a series of numbers in binary and to translate in reverse, to take a binary um, sequence and to work out what it represents, whether it's a number or a letter or other um, character. It might be an equal sign or an asterisk. So this needs to be done in a fun, engaging way, because it can be a bit dry. So one common activity is to make um, number beads, so or binary beads, where we encode students' names in beads, um, where a, say, a red bead represents a zero, and a blue bead represents a one. And by um, decoding their name, turning it into binary, we can then encode that binary sequence into colored beads and be able to be used in that way. Now, of course, in computers, we often use binary to transmit information digitally. Now, at the base level, it's something being turned on or off. Transistors in a computer are simply on or off, and that's why it's binary. The binary is either there is electricity flowing through it or there's not electricity flowing through it. It's a one if there's electricity flowing through it. It's a zero if there's not electricity flowing through it just as we can do with simple circuits. But once we have enough of these happening, we can then start doing more complex things, such as making up sequences um, for Morse code and, and other things based upon a series of zeros and ones being on or off. So the final aspect I want you to look at in terms of data representation is once we have collections of data, how easy it is to make meaning from that data through how it is represented. Now, one activity is to look at the MySchool website and see if you can find useful data 
from that collection of data contained in the My School website. In this case, um, attendance rates at the school that you last taught at in terms of your practicum. So think around data and about how we can incorporate the use of data and the representation of data in the problems that students aim to solve. Remember, that's where it should always come back to. Problem solving and coming up with solutions to these problems through the use of the capabilities students gain from digital technologies. In this case, the representation of data.